Eight days in a row for the TSX would be a nice thing to see. It looks like we might get that by the end of the day. Cash by Shooting, though, is a senior VP and portfolio manager at Raymond James, and he joins us from Ottawa. Uh, what do you think, Cash? Are we in for a, a positive closing on the TSX, uh, not only today, but for the balance of the year? As you said, Pat, pretty good day for the TSX. We've been on a bit of a run here. January was uh, was a little bit more volatile, especially for the American market more than uh, the TSX. But overall, Pat, I feel pretty good about the markets here. I think uh, the underlying fundamentals of the economy are continuing to improve. Conf uh, confidence and, and, and uh, spending is, is uh, still there. I think the main point here, though, is after the type of year we had last year, especially for the U.S. market, but double-digit return for the Canadian market as well, uh, investors going into 2014 should expect uh, that it's going to be a little bit uh, more difficult and, and more turbulent as well. So overall, we feel good, but it won't be as easy as last year. Okay, now, would you prefer the Canadian marketplace to the U.S.? No, we still like the U.S. more. I've, I've liked the U.S. more than the Canadian market for a couple of years now, and that uh, uh, approach continues. And really the reasoning for that is that uh, if you believe that China will continue to slow, it doesn't vote well for commodity prices, which, as we know, is a large part of the TSX. Furthermore, when you look at the American market, you have access to industries and sectors that just don't exist in Canada, such as, for example, technology and, and uh, healthcare, big pharma. Okay, now we got retail sales figures um, this morning that were uh, out in the United States. And if you prefer that marketplace, uh, A, do you think the economy is improving? Because some of the, the figures are a little wobbly right now. They are. And I think that uh, we should expect that to continue. Um, the, the, the recovery is in place and, and it's happening. But uh, the reality of it is it's not going to be a straight line up. So there will be months with disappointing numbers. For example, last Friday we saw the job numbers be uh, disappointing. We we're seeing retail numbers uh, be disappointing. And that's reasonable to expect because the early stages of the recovery are behind us. That was 2013. So it will become more difficult as we head into 2014. But the overall trend at this point is that things are still continuing to improve. So I wouldn't place too much emphasis on today's numbers or, for example, last Friday's numbers. Uh, I don't have enough conviction to tell you that we're, we're reversing course here. I believe things are still improving, but like I said, it won't be as easy as last year. You did touch on China uh, relative to the Canadian economy. Is the Canadian economy in, in as good shape as the United States? Uh, it's not as it, it, it's not in as good a shape as the U.S. Part of that is because the U.S. the U.S. market, the U.S. economy, went down so much more uh, four, five, six years ago. So they were starting from a lower place and and really reset things. Whereas Canada, as we know, did not have the same magnitude of meltdown. And so when you look at the Canadian economy now. I would tell you that the main risks, you want to keep a close eye on the consumer. With consumer debt as a percentage of household income being the highest it's ever been, it puts the consumer in a position where they will not be able to spend at the same rate as they have in previous years. And as we know, consumer spending is a large uh, contributor to economic growth. Yeah, and indeed, the, the budget yesterday was really focused on consumer style issues, if you will, voter issues as well. Um, did, does that play a, a, a better into the Canadian economy? Well, I think that uh, the fact that we're aware of it and government's talking about it is a positive. Uh, what, what really matters, though, is uh, how will this consumer behave in the coming years. When you look at household debt as a percentage of income at about 165 percent, being the highest it's ever been, we're sort of at the crossroads here. The consumer will either slow their spending, which is uh, positive for the economy long term because we don't face the same risk of default and, and not being able to make our payments when interest rates eventually rise. But the downside of uh, slowing their spending is that in the short term, they're not contributing to economic output and, and growing the economy the same at the same rate that they were in the past few years. But that is something we should look for and hope to see that the consumer slows because the rate at which they've been spending borrowed money is not healthy as, as uh, we head into an environment eventually where interest rates will rise. Okay. Now, in terms of how you turn this into investable uh, areas, if you will, you know, one of the things that held us, held us through 2008, 9 and so on was the financial sector being strong. I mean, is that an area that you would be looking to invest in right now if you're kind of uncertain on the consumer in, in Canada? Sure. So if, if you look at U.S. banks, Canadian banks, I would tell you that the U.S. banks have more upside potential. 
uh, potentially a little bit more risk as well. The Canadian banks, um, I don't see a catalyst for share price growth the same way that we have in the past. Part of what's happening, Pat, is that with the Canadian banks, they've had net lean net interest margins, and that's uh, a way of just saying that when you go to the bank and put $20,000 in your savings account, they pay you 1% and they take that 20000 and they loan it to me on my mortgage at 3%. So that 2% spread is their profit. Well, with interest rates as low as they've been, that net interest margin has been quite lean. We haven't seen it in the bottom line because it's been offset by how aggressively loan growth has been accelerating with Canadians rushing to the banks to borrow more and more. As this borrowing slows, the lean net interest margin will surface and become more of a challenge in their earnings. All that to say is it will be difficult for Canadian banks to grow their earnings on a go-forward basis more than it has been in the past few years. So expect some volatility with the bank stocks in Canada. The dividends is safe to me, so you're going to get paid to wait. But uh, again, I, th I think sometimes investors uh, believe that the Canadian banks are, are bulletproof, and we have to remind ourselves that in 2008, our own Canadian bank stocks went down approximately 50%. So expect a little bit more volatility there, but nothing like 2008. Okay, the market rally, uh, one of the hallmarks has been the performance of the gold shares in particular on the TSX. And I mentioned that gold has had about a $50 rally from uh, uh, its base of late. What are, your, what are your thoughts on gold right now? We, uh, we don't like gold. Uh, we, we did buy gold back in 2007 and sold it uh, late uh, in 2012. Really, uh, for gold to make meaningful highs and, and really move up here, uh, we have to either see tapering slow significantly or the U.S. decide that they want to increase the rate at which they're printing money, or we have to start to create somewhat of a doomsday scenario again, whether it's the Europe or, again, U.S. banks uh, drying up. And we don't feel the probability of that at this time is, is high. So I, I think that uh, it's nice for gold investors to see the rally that they've had, but uh, we don't see any meaningful upside from here because, again, for gold to make meaningful new highs, we have to see some, some real bad things happen in the economy and uh, we don't feel that that uh, is is on board right now nor would we want to see a cash thanks so much for your time today appreciate good, it good to be here cash by shooting is a, a senior vp and portfolio manager with raymond james <laughs>